Tammy McAfee. I was raised in the culinary business. Uh, I've been cooking professionally for 45 years, since 1976. You do the math, here it is 2020. And fall in love with it more and more every year. Uh, well, the first one I went to was uh, the Memphis Culinary Academy, and it's not even, you know, it's def uh, not there now. Defaulted or no longer in uh, operation, but uh, it was. Uh, I would say mostly it was fifty percent uh, class, and then you spent fifty percent of that in, in different restaurants. I did a four-year intern, so it was. Uh, I'd say half culinary school and half technical. You know, I think that's what they used back in the day is technical. But it was uh, basically learning on the job. You would spend six weeks in this particular restaurant and you'd get an intern, you know, six weeks at this particular restaurant. You know, you did, uh, you know, everything from Waffle Houses, uh, Italian restaurants, family owned. You did big corporations like hotels, you know. Uh, I washed dishes in a hotel for a week, you know. I wasn't paid by the hotel, I, you know, that was part of the tuition, you know, gig. But, uh, you know, it taught you, you went from what we call fine dining to mom and pop on restaurants. And it was a great way to learn, you know. If you want to cook eggs, there's no better way to learn to cook eggs than a IHOP or a Waffle House. They have it down, you know. They have the wire baskets on top of that shelf for a reason. These are scrambled, these are medium rare, these are medium. You know. So, you know, I looked at it as, you know, the internship was probably the highlight of the whole school because you got to cook a lot of different cuisines. You got to meet and mingle with a lot of different chefs that believed in you. And then you get to volunteer, you know, to work big events at different venue so you got to know the chefs. I think nowadays they call it networking. That's sort of what we did, we just didn't call it networking. So we knew each other. I'm up most mornings by 7.30 at work by, since COVID hit, we tipped on open till nine, but uh, between eight and nine, I'm typically there. Uh, and then I try to take a break, you know, in the mid afternoon from two to three whether that's walking outside or playing a little golf or here lately it's been taking naps since we're not real busy. And uh, I get back to work about 3.30 and you know, since we are 66% now, uh, I get home by nine, but in the, before COVID hit, uh, it was 11 o'clock at night when I got home. So, you know, still pouring uh, 12, 14 hour days, uh, but early on in this business, you know, I've been in it 45 years, 20, 25 of those could have been 22. You know, we work for less than $4 an hour, so you got used to working double shifts because of necessity to put food on the table. And, you know, once you achieve the school, once you have accomplished that, you still, uh, you still have to make a name for yourself and uh, you know trust is what a lot of people look for uh, obviously a very good work ethic you know is something that they look for and you develop that when you work with multiple shifts for multiple people and you know once you become successful everybody's opinion of success is different it's not always salary it's not you know uh, but uh, you know, once your name's on it, you tend to stay there to make sure that it's what you want, too. Later in life, I get extreme pleasure of, uh, like teaching school, when somebody gets it. When somebody gets, why are you worried about food costs, you say. But this could be, you know, with the real big hotels, you know, you might have, you might get a percentage of food costs. So with, with a six-figure salary or $80,000 salary, you can get a percentage of that. You know, why are we interested in certain aspects of this business? It could be related to bonuses. You know, so school teaches you everything you need to know. It doesn't teach you necessarily the urgency of it. 
being in the weeds, as we discussed earlier, or uh, you know, the heat of the kitchen, the heat of the moment, you know, and why some of us just say my food cost is 40, it should be 33, it should be, you know, but you know, you know, the great thing about the culinary field is we are learning every day, and we'll, you know, if I'm in it 10 more years, I'm going to learn something. If not every day, at least something once a week. That I, why, why didn't I think of that 20 years ago? You know, that's the one thing I love about this. But no, nope, did not learn it all from the next school. You know, you learn by mistakes, and when you are learning by mistakes, the whole goal is, and you will learn later after culinary school. When mistakes start costing you money, you know, you tend to pay a lot more attention to the mistakes. You don't make the same one, or you don't want to, over and over. You know, you get a lot of enthusiastic young children, young adults, I should say, out of culinary school. Is you know, we can. You have taught them the proper techniques, and we just need to teach them our part of the technique that we want them to do. You know, you might peel a beef tender a little different than I do, but at least they know what a beef tender is. Sure. You know, you can, me and you can talk to five chefs and everybody's going to cut up that chicken a different way. You're going to hold it different. I'm left-handed, you right-handed, but at least they know what a whole wog is if we tell them to go get a case of whole wog. You know, culinary school is a, I think it's a great opportunity that, you know, every instructor here knows me and they know people in the industry. And if an applicant says I've been to culinary school, that shows me a huge commitment to what they want to do in life. So they've made that decision that I do want to cook the rest of my life. And, you know, my eyebrows kind of go up and they say I'm a culinary grad. Because you know, I'm thinking, wow, if, you know, I got somebody here that's not, not only do they need to be there to make a living, but they want to be there. And the difference between somebody wanting to be there or needing to be there is totally different. You know, you can know how to pan share a fillet wanting to be there or you can do it because you have to be there, the tastes are going to be different. You know, the, uh, the young adults that attend to have graduated school, they uh, obviously dress better. Their punctuation, their time management is much better. Uh, you know, they just have work ethic that's been the starting, you know. They have work ethics that uh, have been taught by their instructors and uh, talked about by the instructors what we look for in the industry. And I think they might understand that a little better than a new hire. I started in the disc pit. You know, I grew up in the industry so I had hands up when I went to the first school that, because I knew what Missing Plots was, I knew what Marifal was. And, you know, my growing up uh, you know, my chores were prepping my daddy for the night shift. You know, whether I did some in the morning or when I got out of school. You know, so I was basically his prep cook for 10 years, you know, from the time I was 12, 13 till I graduated high school. I was that seven years, you know, but uh, he would give me a list. I want this done when you get out of school. So, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And what becomes second nature to me is a big chore for some young culinary students. And uh, I still handle a knife real well. You know, I had a young student one time that said, why didn't I get a hay and knife skills? And I said, bring me two bowls of mushrooms and two knives. And, you know, I had my mushrooms chopped and I never looked at them talking to her. And I said, you know, this is, you know, a grade is a grade, but this is proficient and you are not proficient. You know, this is an expert and you're not an expert yet. I'd given her a B plus, but I think she understood at that point, you know. And how do you get to use a knife? I mean, you know, you're feeding 300 and two people call in, you just develop skills that you can't develop anywhere else. <laughs> and it happens, you know. Facts. Being in the weeds and how you react on your feet cannot be taught in school. And what I look, at, what I look for in a person is how do they handle the mishaps? How do you handle if somebody sends your food back? What's your attitude? You know, that's what I look for in a person. Obviously, I teach here. I know most of the students. I, you know, when they come apply, you know, I pretty well tell them come apply. So, uh, but, you know, 
I've also had the ones that were great students that just, we call them spinners. They look at a ticket, turn around the stove, look at it, you know. You know, the world doesn't realize that we spend three hours prepping for a two hour service. And that two hour service might be 150, and it might be 100, but it's all, you know, jumped into that two hour period. And you better be able to handle pressure. Not only that, in 110, 120 degree heat during the summer. But one thing, when you work in upper echelon kitchens, what I call white tablecloth or fine dining, the customers today are not afraid to give you their opinion. They don't mind paying for quality food. I didn't say quality, quality food. But they want quality food. They don't want to pay, you know, for quality food and not receive quality food. And it's something else you cannot do as a culinarian or an executive chef. You can't buy cheap food and sell it for quality. And you can't buy quality food and sell it cheap. You have to know the mathematics and the food cost in this industry. You know, if you are a well-organized chef, the prep that we talked about, you will become a very good chef. It's going to take an accountant or a great executive chef to teach you how and why we charge for this. You should, we should all value our uh, time and how we are valued as an organization. How does Pine Bluff Country Club value me? Do I make them money or cost them money? You know, I now own one and a half food trucks. You know, I think it, uh, during COVID, the, the, probably the, one of the three safest ways to eat besides curbside and home delivery. Uh, you know, that's how it tells you how excited I am, how many executive chefs in 45 years experience would even want to work on a food truck. You know, but, you know, this has taught me we can do different menus that, uh, generational gaps typically you don't do in country club but now you can do them you can take that same ingredient and do it you know why can you sell it cheaper than you can at the club well you, you don't have tablecloths you don't have wait staff you don't have this cost and that cost you know but we can do different things with it the portions you know are not as big you don't have plates just to go boxes so you know it's fun to do something new and that's what i like about this industry Six months from now, right now, street tacos are huge. Six months from now, something else is going to be huge. At the end of the day, we have to give the clients and customers what they want, not what you want them to have. You know, I told a young chef one time, I said, you know, we are paid very well in fine dining, and we have to make them realize that we are dancing in their world, but we lead it. We're not following we giving them what we they want, but they are also dancing in our world for us to give them the quality that they want. So, you know, they might be dancing with us. And the reason this business has come so full is people are intrigued about what we do. They can't do it. You know, they can do it on small scales maybe, but doing it for the mass is extremely difficult. And a lot of people don't like that dance. They want to look at you dancing, but they don't want to dance because it's extremely high pressure at times. First and foremost, you have to have uh, an extreme, uh, very, very good work ethic. You have to be very punctual. Uh, and you, whatever you do, never stop learning. You know, it's, uh, in this business, uh, we have a lot of 12, 14 hour days. You work weekend. You work holiday, so you know the uh, some of the younger ones can't uh, handle that. But if you look at it in the aspect of you know most say you fish for a hobby, well, what's everybody do on weekends? You know you can look at it as well. I want my weekends, or if you're really a good fisherman, you can say, well, I'm off on Mondays and Tuesdays. Nobody's out there fishing. I'm gonna catch all the big fish. So you have to have the proper attitude as well. Uh, you know, you get, you get to. If you look at it correctly, you get to fish when nobody's fishing, or you can fish when everybody else is. And then everybody at work, well, why did he get weekends off? A weekend is two days consecutive off in our industry. 
it doesn't have to be Friday and Saturday. You know? uh, proper attitude, uh, learning, never stop learning. Work ethic would be the top three, I think, I would say. Uh, you know, in the young chefs would uh, tend to, well, I want to work uh, at the country club and then I want to go to, you know, the Marriott. Or it used to be the Excelsior here, then it used to be the Peabody. Well, you can go work there, you know, part time. You know, you don't have to work full time. So, you know, you, once somebody like me knows that you are that interested in your career, you know, we, I can say, you know, I call the, the, the capital say, hey, would you work Robert Hall one day a week? He wants to learn this particular style of cooking. You know, he's willing to work any shift as long as it doesn't bother his main job. So, you, and you have to learn from different people. I mean, you. You could put 10 ingredients in a pot for me and you to make chili. I, both our chili are going to taste different because of our techniques. Nothing good or bad about either one of them. It's just the way we do it. You need to learn all those you know, from different people. You can do it nowadays, the techniques, you know, as we've done, uh, virtual or video. But uh, at the end of the day, you still have to be able to put your hands on it and taste. You can't taste. The person that has all the cards for them is going to make sure they have that opportunity. They're going to be the one that asks you to do it. Now the other ones that you see has potential and might just not be as uh, as prepared right now. You know, you can kind of hand pick them too. So have you ever thought about doing this or this? You know, I had a young student here that was, you know, she worked for me six months. She worked in pastry. Then I put her on the line, and we was there a month. And I said, Hey, you not very good at a la carte. You need to stick to pastry. She did. Man, thank you. I, you know, I hated this, but she loved pastry. So, you know, you can tell after a while where you need to. So that particular student, I would have said, well, why don't you go to the pastry shop here instead of a huge hotel? Because the, the mass volume she just didn't get. So, you know, typically the ones that are really uh, organized and ready to go, they're going to come up and ask you, hey, can you get me a gig here? And the ones that are working that are scared to ask you, it doesn't take long to pick them out. And when I say pick them out, pick what they are good at. You know, I think you'd be a good banquet chef. I think you'd be a good pastry chef. Mm -hmm. You know, the younger generation doesn't want to work like I did, or still do. You know, you know I've often thought that every school should teach refrigeration management. And I don't mean working on a refrigerator. I mean opening the walk in and say, this needs to be used. And there's not a textbook to say, do this with it. You know, that comes from experience. You don't have to have but a little bit of spinach and something to call it a Florentine. So, you know, what? Do you, and the biggest deal is, what do we call it? Well, make up a fancy name. And that culinary school helps you there too, or we never had it, but Google helps you, or, you know, the social media. So, this industry we got a in a can be extremely good for you, but you have to be equally good to it. You like can't, that. you cannot take take and take and not give, give, give. At a certain point in your life, it has to be equal. I don't care what you've done. Chefing, doctoring. You can't expect to be a world-class doctor and not have a world-class hospital. You have to give. You can't always take. You know, that's in life, I think. Yes, Chef. Thanks for the interview. Thank you. Mm -hmm. this is